Hello, welcome to Chiang Mai, Thailand. I thank you for joining me. What, what a beautiful day it is in our day to serve the Lord. Yes, our day is wicked and our day is evil. But just like the old saying goes, the darker the night, the brighter our light will shine. And we live in a dark hour. When I first came to Thailand to do missionary work for the Lord, I had not much interest in prophecy. But little did I know that God had other plans for me within the first three years of being here in Thailand. God showed me these things that I want to talk to you about today. I have several videos on YouTube about each of these subjects in detail, but today I just want to give a summary of the end time, the way the Lord has shown me, and the order in which these things will happen. And you may say, wow, you're going out on a limb there. No, I just know what the Lord said to me, and I know it was Him that said it. I don't consider myself a prophet. I do nothing for recognition. What I tell you today, the Lord has given me understanding about these things. He showed me these things as I spent hours in prayer and Bible study almost every day. And I feel the Lord has shown me these things to share with whosoever will listen. For these things are at the door and is going to happen very shortly. So I present to you a summary of the end time from this next great event to the millennial reign and the order in which it will happen. So here's an outline of the summary that we will talk about today. Number one, China will be the beginning of World War III. Number two, the, the uh, installation of the one world government. Number three, the Antichrist. Number four, the implementation of the mark of the beast. Number five, the rapture of the church. Number six, the 1,000-year millennial reign, the Lord Jesus and His church. I'm not going to spend much time on each subject, just a highlight of the video that I've already made on each of these subjects. So here we go. This is the next major event that will take place. It will begin at the sixth trumpet in Revelation chapter 9, verse 13 through 16, and verse 18. I want to read these scriptures, Revelation chapter 9, verse 13. And the, six, and the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, verse 14. Say unto the sixth angel which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. Verse 15. And the four angels were loosed which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men. This, this war will last just a little over a year, according to Revelation chapter 9, verse 15. Verse 16. And the number of the horsemen and the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand. And I heard the number of them. John, when he heard that number of this vast army, 200,000 thousand, which in our language today is 200 million, he was astounded. And he said, and I heard the number of them. 
And I want to talk about this in just a moment, just a little bit more in detail. And verse 18, By these three was the third part of men killed, by, by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone, which issued out of their mouths. These scriptures has given us a time frame of this great war that is coming. So beginning with this conflict that began in the great river Euphrates area in 2011, started the countdown of this major event. The nation in verse 16 that can foot a 200 million man army is China. Now, India can too, but India is not seeking world dominance. China is. When China gets involved militarily, this will be a nuclear conflict. The news is already talking about it, and here we are face to face today with God's word that prophesied this event about 2,000 years ago telling us and warning us that this is going to happen. Yet people will not hear, neither will they understand. Daniel chapter 12 verse 10 verifies this. This war will be short. Many lives will be lost. Soon after this, soon after this great war, it's only going to last just a little more than a year. This one world government will come into power. Daniel chapter 7 talks about these nations. But in Revelation chapter 13 verses 1 through 2, these nations become one, signifying this one world government. The one world government will consist of nations that were part of the old Roman Empire. Old Roman Empire. This is verified in Revelation chapter 13, verse 3. This one world government is none other than the European Union led by Germany and France. The man of sin, as Paul called him in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, will take his place at the head of this one world government. He may be called president. He may be called um, prime minister. He may be called emperor. But he will be the leader of this one world government. And he is alive today and he is in government today, I'm sure. I have an idea who he is and I said it in one of my other videos. The second Thessalonians chapter two, verse three, the man of sin, the Antichrist will take his place at the head of this one world government. Daniel chapter nine, verse 27 says this man of sin will make a covenant with many. This is talking about many nations. Mm -hmm. Then will come the implementation of the mark of the beast. We have already seen a pre-run of how this will work with this COVID pandemic. The government told its citizens, you must take the vaccine or you will be removed from your job. And many of the things that were demanded by these governments. So we have now seen how the governments, these nations, Will, be, will use their authority to force those who will not comply. These nations that will make a covenant with the leader of this one world government will force the citizens to comply the, the implementation of the mark of the beast. And by taking this mark, you are giving your allegiance, your allegiance to Satan and his government. And you will be sanctioned if you do not take it. We can neither buy nor sell. 
and many will be killed, according to Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. Yet there will still be Christians that are alive in this world, carrying the gospel of Jesus Christ. I don't think every nation will make a covenant with the Antichrist, but most will, but not all. In Daniel, it talks about this, this man of sin. He called him a beast in the book of Daniels. In book of Daniel, we'll go through all of Europe and then down through Asia, and the latter part will go into Jerusalem. But I said, I said this in other, in other videos that I have made. What is the mark of the beast? The Bible says this mark will be placed in the hands or forehead. This is Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. And I think it's Revelation chapter 13. It specifies that it is the right hand. The European Union has done a 48-page study on an implantable chip that is about the size of a grain of rice. They call it the RFID chip. They have studied this by implanting this chip in the hand and forehead already. Sweden has already tested this chip. Thousands of its citizens have already been implanted. And they have done this through the name of convenience. Look, I don't, need a, I don't need cash. I don't need a credit card. I don't need my bank book. I don't need my health records. It's all stored on this little chip. They've already perfected it. The foundation is laid. The only thing that is lacking is the time for it to be, and it's almost here, and the, implement, and the implementation will be done quickly. Anything that you buy will be, your receipt will be scanned and sent by text to your cell phone. This is the way that will work. Isn't it amazing how cell phones are so easily acquired in our day, even the, poorest, even the poorest of countries, their citizens have cell phones. This is for a reason, for this is part of the foundation of the implementation of this mark of the beast. Yes, this will be sold as convenience, and people by the millions will take it to their destruction. Revelation chapter 14, verse 11, And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth his mark, receiveth the mark of his name. But the people of God will not make an allegiance with Satan by taking this mark. Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads, or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Many have asked, when does the rapture of the church take place? 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. We know by what Apostle Paul said, the catching away of the church will happen at the sound of a trumpet. But in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52, the Apostle Paul gives more detail about this event. Verse 52, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead 
shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. Paul says this event will happen at the last trump. There are seven trumpet events in the book of Revelation, starting with Revelation chapter 8 through chapter 11, verse 15. So here's Revelation chapter 11, verse 15. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. And he shall reign forever and forever. Oh, I want to be part of that. I do. This is what happens when the seventh trumpet sounds. This scripture is talking about the millennial reign and thereafter. So when is the rapture of the church? We must go to Daniel chapter 12. Verse 11 through 12 gives us a time frame when this event will happen. And there is yet one more scripture that sheds more light in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 14. I know, I know what I'm about to say will cause you to scratch your head. I know it did me. Because I never knew this before in this context. Even though I had read this scripture many times, when I read this scripture this time, it just stood out. This passage of scripture is so very interesting, for this has to do with the rapture of the church. Apostle Paul is speaking to the Thessalonian church here. So here is something to think about. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 14. If we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Those that sleep in Jesus will God bring bring with him. This scripture says God will bring those who sleep in Jesus with him when he comes. How can this happen? Luke chapter 16 tells the story of the rich man and Lazarus. We know the rich man when he died he woke up in hell. When Lazarus died the angels took him to paradise, which is our heavenly home, according to Revelation chapter 2, verse 7. So when the Lord comes back, he will bring those who sleep in Jesus with him, according to, to Apostle Paul, as he taught the Thessalonian church about this event. Knowing this, we can see how the Lord will, will be setting up the 1,000-year millennial reign with His church at this time. There would be no other reason for the Lord to bring the saints with Him. Here's a little bit more to think about. It's found in Daniel chapter 12, verse 11, like I was telling you about a few minutes ago. Daniel chapter 12, verse 11, gives a time frame about the event of the tribulation. And it gives two dates. 1,290th day is the end of the tribulation period. And the blessed event that happens at the 1,335th day. There are 45 days between these two numbers, 1,290 and 1,335. There are 40, this is a 45 day period. The rapture of the church could very well take place within this time. I know Matthew 23 says that we cannot know the day nor the hour, but the scripture will give us a time frame and it has right here. The rapture of the church could happen within this 45-day time frame. 
So during this 45 day period, the rapture of the church could take place that will lead up to the 1335th day spoken by the angel in Daniel chapter 12, verse 12, which could very well be the beginning of the, of the 1,000 year millennial reign and the fulfillment of Revelation chapter 11, verse 15. Something to think about. God bless you in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Open up your heart when you open God's Word. So soft and still, His voice will be heard. Let Him guide you through. you